Welcome to Golf Smarter Mulligans, your second chance to gain insight and advice from the best instructors featured on the Golf Smarter podcast. Great golf instruction never gets old. Our interview library features hundreds of hours of game improvement conversations like this that are no longer available in any podcast app. I like the term roll it you know, versus hit it because I think it just, in the golfer's mind, it creates a different motion of the putter back and forth. If you think about rolling something, it kind of has a smoother feel to it. I think when people are thinking about hitting, my experience is that typically they're going to hit with their trailing hand. So for a right-handed golfer, you put that little pop in down at the bottom with your right hand. Sometimes you see people that are very handsy and it almost looks like they're chipping the ball with their putter. I think rolling, just for most people, kind of inspires more of a quiet hands kind of stroke. With another interview from the archives of Golf Smarter, here's your host, Fred Green. Last week, we covered the first four steps of banana putting with Paul Hobart. And I wanted to make sure that we completed his thoughts. Welcome back to the Golf Smarter Podcast, Paul. Oh, I thank you, Fred. I appreciate you sticking around to do two parts to this conversation because we started last week of the free one, but this is for a members-only episode, which means if we go longer than 30 minutes this time, it's okay. These people, Excellent. These listeners do not mind if we do that. At least, I don't think they do. So let's do a recap of where we were last week uh, because I think it's important. Let, let's start with your five simple steps of banana putting. Okay. Well, the five steps, uh, which we talked about some of those, are scan it, plan it, point it, roll it, and rate it. Okay. And a quick overview of scan it. Okay, scan it's going to be basically gathering all the all the information that you need to get that's going to tell you what's going on with, you know, the area of the green where your putt's going to happen. You know, so we're going to consider um, you know, the the lay of the land around the green. We're going to we're going to consider, you know, kind of watch our playing partner's shots, see what the golf ball's doing. We're going to just going to do we're going to try to get the mindset so that it's kind of tuned in to gathering all that information that's you know it's out there whether we pay attention to it or not you know there's 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 slope there whether we look at it or not so we just want to get to where we're you know almost unconsciously gathering information from the time we can see the green out in the fairway all the way up to the point where we're getting ready to you know decide how we're going to make the putt and put the ball down and and uh, kind of get the putting process started and which is much more than just reading the green this concept of scan it no question. Yeah, I think people tend to get lost um, just looking at what's going on where their putt is, and then, you know, depending on you know what you're paying attention to or not, um, you can you can kind of get in that situation where you've got a you know a ten foot putt and you're pretty well sold that it does one thing, and you know you go ahead and you putt it, you get a bad result, and then as you kind of walk around, you go, oh gosh, there was there was a lot of signals around this green telling me that it would do otherwise. I just didn't pay attention to them. So, you know, I think it's more than just reading the the little area between the golf ball and the cup. And, you know, lots of times, and I have trouble with this. Um, well, let's talk about the trouble that we that people have, ball going uphill, ball going downhill. Is there a consistent break with that? Like if the ball is um, going to go uphill, is it always just going to kind of go up to the right? I, well, I think when, it, you know, if you're, if you're going uphill – that you're always going to have a little bit less break than when you're going downhill. And the reason for that is the ball's not traveling as fast, okay. you know, coming downhill. So it's got, you know, gravity's going to affect the putt a lot more. You know, so typically your uphill putts are going to be um, putts where you're going to play less break usually. Mm-hmm. You know, so as we talk about the, the banana concept, an uphill putt, there's going to be a lot less difference between, you know, your fastest line and your and your easiest line just because in general the ball's being hit harder um, when you have a downhill putt a lot of times you'll have a you know quite a big uh, disparity between the putt that breaks the most and one where you're hitting the ball firmer just because the ball's being hit so much easier that, that you can have that that variance in there yeah but paul you didn't answer my question let's let's go back is a ball okay. a ball going uphill generally going to go in in the same direction is it generally whether it's fast or slow is it it's going to break. Right, Is right. it generally going to break to the right? Can you just like, okay, it's going uphill. So it's going to kind of, I should definitely go left to right on this. 
or is that not necessarily? I wouldn't the case? say I wouldn't say all uphill putts are gonna are gonna break to the right now. Okay. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. What about this concept that when you play courses, they go, it's always gonna break towards the water, or or, or to the ocean, or to the live to the mountains over there, or to downtown. Gotcha. I mean, yeah. is that the case? Because I remember speaking early on in Golf Smarter's uh, life uh, to a golf architect, and actually Fazio, and um, he said that no, it's gonna break. Towards the irrigation. Okay. And it's like, oh, duh, <laughs> because the whole thing about the greens is the water's got to roll off the green, right? So right, right, it's right. where the irrigation's going to go. That's how it's going to break. Don't think about this thing where everything's going to be breaking towards the mountains or towards sure. the, the river. I think there's, you know, I think there's occasions where there's a big, there's a big influence of that. I, th- I think because uh, I've played some courses out in Arizona and out west where. You know, there's there's a distinct influence, but what I find is it usually just um, it accentuates any slope that's already there. You know, so if it's if you've got a, you know, you're playing in Arizona someplace, and they say, well, everything breaks away from the mountain. Is if you've got a you know an uphill putt or a downhill putt in the direction you're know, moving away from that mountain, I think is you know just it makes the the upslope or the downslope play a little bit more so than just the slope by itself. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's the same case with grain too. I think usually when you talk about the the um, you know the Florida golf courses and the Southern golf courses, people are always trying to figure the the grain out, and generally it just you know it runs down the slopes, like you said, in the direction where water would go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think if you find yourself in that situation going up or down, you say, well, it's going to probably be slower going uphill, faster going downhill, and if I have something that's going across that. I probably need to add some more break to it because it's going to tend to go down the hill a little bit more than, you know, a situation where maybe I didn't have as much grain. You just gave me another epiphany. Wow, you're good at this. Um, (laughs) Because I I frequently hear them talking about the grain, the grain. I live on the West Coast, and I'm going on, I don't don't know, what are you talking about? Right. That's an Eastern and Southern thing where the grain is, uh, dictates how the ball's going to roll, huh? Right. It does, and it depends on the kind of grass that's on the grain, so... Um, you know, I'm in Ohio, so we have a lot of bent grass greens here and, you know, bent grass, the blades of grass are a lot smaller. So grain's really not a big issue very much on, you know, on, you know, reasonably, reasonable speed greens in in this area. Um, when you get down South, you've got blades of grass that are a lot coarser. Um, so it's, you know, it's a different construction of the, of the, the blade of grass. So it's going to be much more prevalent when you get on that grass to have a, a grainy effect. Interesting. Okay, now we're, we've we've kind of done scan it for a little bit longer. That's okay. I'd like to get in depth in these things. Let's let's move sure. on to Planet again. Overview okay. of Planet. Yeah, Planet's going to be um, you know with the information that you've got from from scanning the area and kind of soaking all that in. Is you're going to look at the putt. You're going to decide what speed you're comfortable hitting the putt. You know, do I want to hit it easy? Do I want to hit it kind of a medium pace? Do I want to hit the ball really firm? Based on that, then we're going to choose a line that we envision the ball traveling on to go in the hole. Okay, so that's where we're going to come up and kind of paint a picture of how the ball is going to get from where it is to the cup. You know, is it going to go in the front of the cup at you know six o'clock if you can imagine a clock face, or is it going to go in at five o'clock or four o'clock or three o'clock? Each one of those entries into the cup it dictates a different starting line and a different pace to get the ball to go in there. And that's so where that's, the visual you know, of the banana putting really comes into play. Exactly, yes. You know, so if you're if we were if we were going to kind of use the the banana in, in in conjunction with the the face of the clock, you know, in many cases if you're hitting the ball, you know, at the, at the firmest speed, the ball's going to maybe go in somewhere near the 6 o'clock point on the clock face. And if you're going to use the higher side of the banana, you know, or, or really let the ball kind of arc out to the side and take all the break that it possibly could. Then you're looking at a ball that could come in, you know, at four o'clock or three o'clock, or some cases even two o'clock, depending on the severity of the green. This is where I'm a little bit lost because I would think that when the ball is going to have that much break, you're going to have to hit it a little bit harder to make sure it gets all the way there. But it's going to be slower, so you don't want to hit it too hard. And if you're hitting too hard, you don't want to, you want to take all that break out. Yeah, listening to that, I can't figure out how people ever miss putts. <laughs> <laughs> Stick but, with yeah. me, kid. <laughs> yeah, well, there's you know, there's a lot of considerations there. Yeah, 
I think some of it depends on whether, you know, if, it, if it's an uphill putt or a downhill putt, we're going to have to increase or decrease the, you know, the pace that we hit the ball. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, you know, when I'm talking about that, that clock face thing, we're really talking about kind of moving, moving the front of the cup around, you know, so every putt's not going to go straight in the six o'clock part or the, or the portion of the cup that's, you know, nearest to you when you set up to the ball. You know, sometimes we have to get it to go in the side. And if you had a putt that, you know, that had a lot of break to it, um, you know, we're going we're gonna to hit it out there. But in most cases, it's going to be a lot easier stroke or a much lower um, speed of the golf ball rolling. So it's going to travel on that and get to the hole. And, and also when we're going on that, you know, playing the most break, we're just trying to get the thing to topple in right at the last minute. So we don't need a whole lot of speed to, to carry it all the way up there. Now we we've spent a lot of time with Jeff Mangum on this show. Um, mm-hmm. He was on every week on the uh, golf uh, golf smarter tips podcast, and he can make things complicated. There's no make- question. He's he's he knows he probably knows more about uh, about putting than anybody on the planet. I would think. And to him, it's a science. There's no doubt. No no doubt about it. And and uh, one of the things that that uh, he you know, introduced me to was this concept that the the last three feet is really the most important line of your putt. Right. And that um, every putt's a straight putt from that point on. It's that last three feet. It's just going to, you know, go in. Right. So you got to just extrapolate from back there. Is that correct? Right. I mean, do you agree with this yes. concept? Yeah, I think his, cause I'm, you know, Jeff's a, a friend of mine and we've spent some time together and, and, uh, I've learned quite a bit from him, I, but I think I, I think you, you have to figure out, you know, what what he talks about is trying to figure out where, you know, how's the ball going to go into the hole? Mm-hmm. You know, where's where's like you said, the last three feet? Where's the ball? Where's the ball coming from as as it goes in? So I think as you know, as you as you work back from that, and you know, what I'll do a lot of times with people is take a, you know, just take a golf club and lay it down across the hole. You know, and say, look, you, you need to get your ball to come in right down where this, you know, where the shaft of this club is. Mm-hmm. And then when they they go, oh, okay, well that means I have to put the ball over there to get it to come down that line. Okay, okay, good. We're we're learning. <laughs> you know, so it's not a it's it's not always a right edge left edge thing. It's you know sometimes you got to hit the ball you know out there over there so that you can get it onto that line where it's going to go straight into the cup the last couple of feet, like like you said and like Jeff describes. Mm-hmm. Now, you had one line in uh, in Banana Putting, the book, um, that really intrigued me, and I, I want to kind of grill you on it, and I think this is a good place to do that. You said, the perfect line is a waste of time. Okay. Yep. Yep. I do say that, and I do believe that, because I think, you know, when, 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 I to listen to, when I listen to people talk about putting, especially if, you know, if there's a conversation going on, you know, if you and I have a match against somebody, people are always trying to figure out the line. Right. And I think, you know, within the banana concept, there's a whole bunch of different lines, you know, and, and it's and not that we're trying to confuse things and tell people that, you know, there's there's 50 different options and they got to figure out which, you know, which one of those to choose. Golf's too hard already. I know. We're trying to, we're trying to make it. So we're, we're trying to we're trying to complicate it so we can simplify it. Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> But it's, you know, so I, I want people to get over it and, you know, and realize that, hey, you can, you know, if you want to play a whole bunch of break, you know, if you're scared to death that the ball's going to go by the cup and you don't want to three putt or you don't want to knock it past, there's nothing wrong with playing a ton of break and having that thing fall in at the last minute. There's also nothing wrong with hitting it, you know, hitting it really hard, having it hit the back of the cup and jump up in the air and come back down. Both of those are okay. You just have to decide, okay, which which one's going to work best for me, and which one am I most comfortable with? You know, and which is the one that seems to give me the best results. But again, I, I come back to this idea that yeah, if you can get it to hit the back of the cup, bounce, you know, bounce straight up and then drop into the cup, if it is, uh, you know, a half a ball distance off, it's going to rim around the cup and roll away, or exactly. just go way past it. Yep, it's so precise from that's far away. There, I can't think of too many occasions where I would recommend to somebody that they hit it at that speed. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. I would I would steer most people most of the time towards the upper side of that banana shape. You know, let's let's mm. kind of stay in the upper third of that where we're playing 
a decent amount of break, and we're not hitting the ball so hard that if we miss it, it's going to go, you know, four, five, six, ten feet past. Let it pour so I think into that's, the cup. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I think, there's, I think there's occasions where, because, you know, one of the things I, I point out is some of it is situational, too. So if you, ha- you know, if you and I have a match going on and, you know, I'm one down to you on the last hole, you know, and I, and I have a putt that would maybe tie the match up is I want to, you know, I want to make sure I get that thing to the hole. I don't want to leave it short, you know, and pay you the $2 that we, that we played for. So I may want to turn it up a little bit and say, well, I'm going to hit this a little bit firmer, but I just need to go ahead and change my line in that, in that regard. Now I think you can go the other way too. And I tell people like, look, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. There's putts that kind of give me the willies, you know, you're standing over it and you think, boy, I, this one can really make me look silly. <laughs> and I don't have, and I don't have a lot of confidence. So what Sorry I'm for laughing. Do, that's the story that's of my okay. life. <laughs> yeah. Sounds familiar. Huh? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Is, you know, if I'm not, if, if I'm not feeling great about my putting and I'm not really sure, you know, what this is going to do. And I want to really kind of leave myself an easy cleanup afterwards if I don't make it is I'll just go ahead and play a ton of break, you know, and, and kind of baby that thing up to the cup. And it's perfectly okay to do that. I mean, that's, you know, I think, I think I wrote in the book, um, at one point, if you're going to putt it like a sissy, aim it like a sissy. (laughs) And it, and it, you know, basically what it is like, look, I, I'm perfectly honestly, I'm not that comfortable with this putt. I'm, you know, maybe I'm not completely sold on what it's going to do. I don't want a three putt. I don't want to look silly. So I'm just going to play a ton of break and hit it really easy. And you know what? If if that ball goes in, nobody's going to access your head and find out what you were thinking and, and take the trophy back from you. Hmm. You know, it's all about making the ball go in. It really doesn't matter how you do it. You just have to come up with a, a plan that works. And I think a lot of people, you know, they they get tied into that, that line and then they stand over the ball and they go, gosh, this doesn't feel right. And then they change something or they hit the ball harder, easier, what have you. And then they hit a poor putt and, you know, it's, it's just not worth it. You just have to figure out what's the best way for you to get it to go in. Well, it's interesting that you're advocating having a plan. And yet we started our conversation on the last episode talking about putting like a kid. Exactly. And keeping exactly. it as simple as possible. Right, right. I think it's, I, I think when, if you have a, if you have a process, especially as we, you know, get to be adults and we kind of have to think about things, unfortunately, if you can have a process, I think you can actually get to where you're, you're putting more like, you, know, you have more like a childlike approach to it. You know, so once I, you know, I advocate in the, in the, in the pointed stage, which we're getting to, that you line the ball up. So in, in, when I do that and I go ahead and set up to it, is I feel like I've really freed myself up to just go ahead and putt the ball like a kid at that point because I've kind of done my homework and I've, and I've, you know, I've done the, the planning and the things I think are required to get me set up to be able to make the putt. You know, so I think at that point you can kind of free yourself up, you know, cause I don't want people to have a whole lot of thoughts and a whole lot of complications as they're standing over it. Okay. Well then I think we should get to point it. Okay. Well, you point it, like I just mentioned a second ago, basically yeah. is you know, I, I advocate that people use, you know, a line on the golf ball, the trademark on the golf ball, something like that, that they can put down and point along the start line that goes with the putt that they've decided they're going to hit. You know, so if I've decided it's going to be, you know, I need to start it at the right edge of the cup to get it to go in, I'm going to line that line up towards the right edge. And if I decide that I need to aim it six feet out to the right of the cup, that's where I point that line because I'm going to use that to match my putter up with it and and, and, and convince myself that I've got everything pointed dire- the direction I need to go. Yeah, I have a friend who's got one of those little toys that you just lay on top of a ball and you can draw a line on the ball. Sure. And, you know, for a buck ninety-five or whatever it is. And here I have, you know, my thirty-dollar click gear go, click go, click and go thing. That's the gyroscope that makes the ball spin, and then I can draw a line that's right on the exact same. Is that? Am I wasting my time? Sure. Is no, that, it's okay. Is that legit? I think if you watch, I think if you watch the. Uh, you know, the PGA Tour and the LPGA Tour, you see a, you see a lot of different versions of the line. Mm-hmm. You know, some people like it thinner. Some people put a great big thick line on there. I mean, it almost looks like a billiard ball. Um, some people like different colors. I think it's, you know, you really just have to experiment and say, okay, I think, 
Right, but is this you know, gyroscope I, I, toy that I'm playing with that, that's finding I'm, the exact center of the ball, is that really going to give me a truer roll, or does that not make any difference? I, you know, I, I would say that that works, although I would think the, you know, the, the, the golf ball companies would probably tell you that there's not that big of a difference nowadays, you know, as much as there was probably 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. Just because the con- the construction of the ball kind of lends itself to the ball being yeah being much uh, much rounder and be- and better balanced. Right, exactly, because it's a solid. It's not rubber bands. It's a solid sure, piece. Of, sure. So yeah, it's not going to be lopsided. And so, I, you know, we just did uh, a couple weeks ago. We had um, Dave Osted, and we just for an hour we talked about golf balls um, right. and selecting a ball. And he says, you know what? They're not going to tell you this now, but between all the golf balls that are out there, even from the low end to the high end price balls, they're only about four to six yards difference in your driving. They're they're right. pretty they're yeah. pretty similar. So yeah, I would think I can that, believe yeah. that cause I think the con- the construction I think is a lot more standardized from from uh, you know one from one side of the spectrum to the other. Right. What they're talking about now is spin. How much spin you right. can get on it. And now with the new mm-hmm. wedges, you can't even do that. So well, at least right. not till twenty twenty four. We don't have to worry yeah. about it until twenty twenty. <laughs> Yeah, we're good. We're good for now. We're good for now. Okay. We won't uh, even know what spin is at that point. Right. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, your concept of roll it, not hit it, but your next point on uh, your five simple steps to right. better putting is roll it. Yes. Your next point on uh, your five simple steps to right. better putting is roll it. Yes. And it's and we like to you know I like the term roll it, you know, versus hit it or something like that because I think it just creates, you know, in the in the golfer's mind it creates a different motion of the putter back and forth. You know, if you think about rolling something, it's you know it's, it's it kind of has a smoother feel to it. Yep. Um I think when people are thinking about hitting, my experience is that typically they're going to hit with their trailing hand. You know, so for a right-handed golfer, you put that little pop in down at the bottom with your right hand, changes the, you know, putters have loft on them. A lot of people don't know that. They got a couple degrees of loft on them. But it's, you know, you can sometimes you see people that are very handsy. It almost looks like they're chipping the ball with their putter. You know, you can catch it on the bottom edge of the putter. Sometimes you hit the top edge of the putter. Many cases you're opening and closing the club face. So I think rolling just for most people kind of inspires more of a, a quiet hands kind of stroke. Um, where it's, you know, it's not a, you know, you're not giving the ball that little whack down at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a left hand low guy. Uh, and okay. I, and I've always felt that when my right hand was low, I would get my wrists into it more and I would push more with my right hand. It would be in more control, but with sure. my left hand low, um, I can keep, keep my, uh, the back of my left hand facing towards the target and not mm-hmm. break my wrists. I can focus on not breaking my wrists. Right. Very um, good. Is that is that okay? I mean, would do you advocate left hand low? Or? I think it's a good it's a good technique if you're if you're producing those conditions like you talked about. You know, you're keeping the club face square, uh, and you're making good con- people discount making good contact with putts. Mm-hmm. You know, but if you don't hit a putt you know, consistently in the center of the putter with the same amount, you know, with kind of the same presentation of the putter face, you're going to get very different results, especially as you go to longer putts. Yeah, you know, so in many cases when people are not doing well in their longer putts, it's just a it's a factor of not hitting the ball the same way each time. Yeah, you know, so I think the left hand low for a lot of people minimizes kind of that you know that that whack factor with the the trailing hand. You know, it kind of keeps that that wristiness out of it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Now, curious that you you talk about hitting it in the center of the putter. I know with drivers now, there's no there's no more sweet spot, right? We're not talking about a wood where if you don't hit it in the exact right spot, because the whole face of the driver uh, is you're going to make solid contact. Um, sure. And putters now are they? Do you still really need to hit it in the center of the putter, or I mean, aren't it's, they balanced to the point where any almost anywhere where you hit the hit the ball, it's going to give you decent results? They're certainly a lot better, and I think what the club companies would tell you is that even though you're, you know, they've they've put all the interesting weights and designs and everything on the back of it, and you know, some of the ping putters you see nowadays and the tailor made, and you know, there's all kind of all kinds of contraptions on the back side of it. Um, I still think that when you when you hit it out towards the toe or towards the heel, you're going to get different distance results than if you would have hit it right in the center. Um, it's probably less than it would be back in the you know the days of the bullseye putter, or a, 
you know, an 8802 blade kind of putter. Um, but you, you're still going to get some different results, especially as the putt gets longer. Now, I think you can make a pretty good case on, you know, putts up to 10 feet that you could hit some of those putters just about any place on the club face and still do okay. But I think as you get out into the, you know, 15, 20, 30 foot putt, and depending on the speed of the greens you play on too, um, you could you could still get some variety as far as the distance that you're getting. Hmm. Interesting. And what about a center shafted or a heel shafted putter? Are you going to still get a solid hit either way? I I generally prefer a center shafted putter for myself. Okay. Uh, uh, because I just feel like I'm, that's where I'm aiming. I'm aiming right at the end of the shaft. I'm looking straight down, and that's where the ball is going to make contact. Right. And I feel like it, if it just goes a little bit off front or back of the, you know, in front or in back of the uh, the shaft, I'm still going to get equal, you know, um, resistance from the, the the putter versus if I hit it on the toe on a on a or if I hit it on the yeah, if I hit it on the toe of a heel shafted putter, it's not going to make solid contact. It's going to twist a little bit. Yeah, I would. I I think in that case, I think you're absolutely right. I think a heel shafted putter, um, particularly with ball struck out towards the toe, you're going to really you know kind of diminish the speed that you produce on it. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas a center shafted, um, you probably got a little leeway both ways, like you said. I think really the choice between those two putters is going to be based on what kind of stroke you have. So a center shafted putter is going to work better for somebody that kind of favors more of the straight back and straight through concept, kind of like the Dave Peltz idea. Whereas a heel shafted putter is going to work better for somebody that that, that swings the putter on more of an arc, you know, which is kind of the you know, Stan Utley, I guess, school of thought that the, you know, the putter kind of swings in a, you know, a circular fashion since you're the, you know, the golfer's kind of the middle and the putter's on the outside, you know, cause that, that arcing kind of stroke, the, the toe of the putter is actually, it's going to look like it's opening and closing as you swing it through. Um, it's hard to do that if you've got kind of a face balanced center shafted putter. Mm-hmm. You know, while we're on the topic of putters and, I promise you, we will get to the last one <laughs> of the five. We didn't last episode, and I promise I'm glad we, we don't have seven. <laughs> <laughs> in selecting a putter, do you mind talking about selecting a putter? Because I've been in stores where I say, what, would be, what should I be looking for in a putter? And they went, eh, whatever feels good. Whatever feels like, good. Yep. It's like, really? <laughs> this, you're a professional salesperson here? Whatever feels good? You have no. You can talk to me for an hour about a driver and a wedge, but you, tell, you putter, it's like, meh, whatever you want. Right. 